let's continue our story about diet and nutrition story. It's not the best ever, is it? But anyway, we're going to have a look at fibre. I don't know why I've sort of got the, the temptation to do this in a slightly brown colour. I'm not sure how brown this is, but I'm going to talk about fibre in a somewhat beige shade. And that is because fibre is absolutely critical. Of course, fibre is um, really found in, uh, in fruits, vegetables, in grains. But we find that it's absolutely critical critical for healthy digestion in fact let me put the word healthy in there because i think that's really important to stress now furthermore with fiber it's all about the regularity of stool and yes just in case you're unsure that is how regularly you go to the toilet now remember regularity is almost like predictability you know you go twice in a day or you go every morning eight o'clock but fiber helps with regularity which of course keeps us healthy we don't want those waste products stored inside us um for any extended period of time, if you've ever experienced this type of condition, you'll know it's not very pleasant, for example. So fibre helps with that. And specifically, it maintains a healthy large intestine. Now, you guys will know from your biology studies that the large intestine is almost like the end of the journey for waste and for faeces that are ultimately going to be passed out via the, uh, via the anus. But you know that the large intestine comes before that, right? The small intestine is a bit further up. Uh, the process where things like digestion uh, are occurring. Now, one of the critical things about fibre is it aids in the absorption of water. If I, if I try and spell that not incorrectly, it might help, but it helps to absorb water. So our hydration is also dependent on our fibre. So some critical points about why fibre is important in the, in the diet. And actually, it's one of the things that people will sort of suffer from quite regularly, a lack of fibre. In diet. Now we're going to take a bit further and we're going to talk now about vitamins, okay? So vitamins, here we go. And I'm going to sort of like give a bit of a heading here. And what I want to do first is I want to talk about a vitamin. I reckon you're pretty familiar with it. I'm going to do it in yellow for a particular reason. I'm <laughs> yellow for a particular reason. Here is our vitamin C, okay? Now our vitamin C is derived primarily from citrus fruit. So think your oranges, think your lemons, think your limes, etc., etc. That's what it's for. And vitamin C is absolutely critical for the immune system. So in a period I'm recording this sort of, I guess it's post -pan post COVID pandemic, vitamin C is a really important uh, part of a healthy diet, right? It's keeping us well. I'm, I'm, let me be clear, I'm not suggesting it prevents COVID. What I'm suggesting is it, it maintains a healthy immune system, which is part of fighting off COVID, of course. So that's the point that I would make on that one. Furthermore, we're interested in vitamin D. Okay, now, of course, there are a, a vitamins. We're going to get to B in a second. But vitamin D, really important to stress here. This is what I would like you guys to really have a strong uh, knowledge of. It's important for the absor or the increased apparent absorption of calcium. So it's increased calcium absorption. And we're going to come to calcium as a mineral in a second. But by taking on vitamin D, that increases our capacity to take on calcium. And as a result of that, it leads to the health of bones and muscles. So for us as sports scientists, this is really important, right? So vitamin D, really important for us sports scientists because it helps in the absorption of calcium, which leads to healthier bones, muscles, amongst other things. Now, two more vitamins I want to address with you. Address rather than undress. We're going to look here at vitamin B12. Okay, vitamin B12. Now, B12, very important vitamin. It is involved in the increased production of red blood cells. So it causes increased red blood cell production. Of course, for us as sports scientists, that sort of oxygen carrying capacity of red blood cells via hemoglobin is really, really important, okay? And it, the way that it does this is it aids the absorption of iron. Now, of course, iron, <laughs> why am I writing a P? <laughs> Well, iron is PB, I've got, um, what am I talking about? Iron is PB, lead is PB, iron is F. Goodness gracious, James. But one of the point I want to make here uh, is uh, absorption of iron. So the point I want to make here, of course, iron is uh, iron is the element which goes to forming hemoglobin, millions of which sit on each red blood cell. So hence our points there. Let's take a touch further. Let's use a lovely pink colour to talk about B-complex. So B-complex, really important um uh, vitamin for the following reasons it is involved in boosting energy levels okay so you may well know people who are on uh, b complex complex supplementation for example and it's really important for brain function okay so really healthy cognition and brain function really aided now i want to go a little bit further because what we're going to do now is we're going to have a little look at minerals now we mustn't 
sort of confuse vitamins and minerals. They are ultimately different structures, okay? But with minerals, we're interested here, and I'll sort of work backwards. We're interested here, first of all, in sodium. Now with sodium, we are talking about the contribution to muscle contraction. Now I'm not gonna get into sarcoplasmic reticulums and um, various other elements of sort of uh, microscopic um, muscular contraction process, but that's the big picture. Sodium helps with muscular contraction, therefore it must be in our diet. Furthermore, we're also interested in, so in iron. We've mentioned this already, you know, iron is directly involved in red blood cell production, specifically the HB red blood cell production, specifically the HB, the, the hemoglobin element. And finally, folks, to finish this off nice and strong, before we just at the end look at water, I want to remind you as well of calcium, which we mentioned earlier. I think I might have done the same colour. Sorry about that. Um, so with calcium here, we're talking about bone and muscle health. So we must, of course, have that in our diet. And of course, that's assisted, as we mentioned before, by vitamin D. Now, final things which we'll do in a lovely shade of blue. I want to remind you probably actually of the importance of water in the diet. Now it goes, for, it's a fairly clear point, right? It's about maintaining hydration, no real shock there. We wanna keep hydration nice and high. Now notice the word maintain there, folks. We're not talking about rehydrating. The, the idea of an athlete is never to become dehydrated. Water in our diet is in, critical for cell function. Think about the role of cytoplasm within cells, for example. And of course, it's critical in our transport network because it's water that ultimately will go into forming blood plasma, which is where all of our red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and other nutrients are actually transported and um, moved around the body through that circulation in that plasma, often dissolved into that plasma. So we've covered there our fiber, our water, our vitamins, our minerals. Hope that's helpful. Thanks.